Next speaker is Uri Petish, yeah, okay. uh, talking about from deep neural networks to fully differentiable programs. Okay. Uh, so hi, everybody. Thanks for joining in. My name is Uri Patish. I'm a PhD candidate at the Weizmann Institute of Science. And today I'll be talking about how we can go from deep neural networks to fully differentiable computer programs. And I'll be presenting some of the research I've done on this topic with my advisor, Shimon Ullman. So let's get started with the main idea. I'm guessing most of you have heard of deep learning or deep neural networks. As in the last few years, these have proven as highly effective solutions to challenging problems in computer vision, when modeling language and text, and even when trying to master the game of Go. And what makes neural networks so effective is their ability to adapt or to learn from data. So it turns out it's pretty hard to write an explicit computer program that, uh, that solves these tasks explicitly. And a much more effective way to go about this problem is by designing a large neural network has a bunch of parameters which you can tune your value, you can tune its values once you have a large set of labeled data. And the way this kind of tuning or learning happens is what's known as gradient based parameter learning. So neural networks are designed in a manner that enables an efficient calculation not only of their outputs but also of their gradient. And turns out that whenever you can calculate the output efficiently, you can also calculate the gradient efficiently using a dynamic programming algorithm known as the backpropagation. So while there are tasks where you just want to learn from data, there are other tasks where you just want to express some logic using an imperative programming language such as Julia. Uh, for example, if you want to implement the factorial function, you might use this small code snippet that uses variables and while the loops, and that's going to allow you to describe this uh, uh, logic in a succinct fashion. So an interesting question that comes up is whether we can take the logic of imperative programming and combine that with the adaptivity of machine learning. So to do that, we, we're going to need to be able to define and differentiate parametric programs. So as a toy example, let's think about this following function. So here I'm going to take x as an input. I'm going to multiply it by some parameter A, which I might want to learn its value using, uh, using gradient-based learning. Then I'm going to store the output of this multiplication in a new variable called Y, perform two transformations, sum them up, and return that as my final value. So if we we'll write down the calculation and want to see how many terms that we'll, we will get uh, for the partial derivative uh, for A, so in this case, we're going to have two terms. And if you want to do that automatically, so we can have an execution graph that looks as follows. So here, first, x will be multiplied by A. We'll have two different trajectories for the two transformation, and then we're going to sum the output. Now, if we're going to use vanilla backpropagation, we're going to have two different trajectories, one through B and another through C to calculate both of the terms for the partial derivative. So in such simple cases, we can get away with using vanilla backpropagation. <coughs> but what happens if we have a Y loop? In this case, we're going to have many uh, divergences and convergences in the execution graph. So for example, even when we have just uh, two iterations, we're already going to have four terms for the partial derivative for A. And these are going to correspond to four different trajectories in, in, in the execution graph. And this already should illustrate that if we want to be able to do any, an arbitrary number of uh, iterations, we're going to need to use some different mechanisms that will allow us to sum the different terms and do this calculation efficiently. So that might be challenging, and it might be uh, might require some effort. So b before we go into that, we might ask ourselves, do we actually need to bother with that? Can't we just do with the uh, neural networks? So let me motivate the answer to this question with the following example. So suppose you're given this simple image classification task, and uh, it's a binary classification task, and the images are really simple. So there you have two non-intersecting curves, and you have two dots, and the you, uh, the class image 
is when uh, the two dots are on the same curve and it's a non-class image when they are on two different curves. And turns out that if you could take this kind of data and you throw it on classic convnets, you get pretty poor performance. On the other hand, I think it's quite clear that there's nothing to learn about here. You just want to code some logic. And in this case, we can do this following program that you're going to take as an input the image X. We're going to have two image transformations that are going to perform the detection, first for the curve, then for the points, and then we want to move the points along the curves until they meet. So in such simple cases, if I know these images exactly, I can program these two detection uh, operations by hand. But what happens if there's noise? And I don't know what, how that noise behaves. In that case, I might want to take these two detection operations, make them parametric, and learn their parameters using gradient-based learning. And in such cases, we might want to do this combination. Oops, sorry about that. So let's switch gears and see how we can do that in Julia. So I've been developing a package for differential programming in Julia, which I call, which I call Nili. It enables you to construct standard neural networks, but you can also do standard programming tasks like writing the factorial or the two curves. And interestingly, you can do any hybrid of the two and still get efficient automatic differentiation. So for example, in the two curves problem, you, you can get a program that gets almost 100% accuracy with, on the non-noisy case. But when you add noise, the accuracy will drop to 63. But since on this kind of uh, uh, problems, using, uh, using this package, you can actually train the program. You can get back your performance on the test. And that's an interesting, that's actually, so there's really smart guys in my lab who are trying to do that with TensorFlow. And apparently, that's quite challenging. Uh, so that might be interesting if you're looking into such problems. Everything is 100% uh, Julia code, my own code. So I started this project back in when Julia was in 0.3.8, something like that. And I've had to write down all the automatic execution and the differentiation and uh, down to the convolutions themselves. But now it runs pretty efficiently on a CPU. OK, so I'll just say a few words about the computational model. Uh, Basically, programs are rooted trees in the computer science sense. The, node, the nodes are the information from uh, processing units, and the edges determine input-output relationships. Uh, and uh, when you want to execute a function, there is a recursive uh, execution that, that goes through the tree in a depth-first order. So uh, the node types, you have imperative programming, like defining variables and uh, conditional execution clauses like, such as if, if else, and even while loops. And you also have the standard transformations that are typical for neural networks. I just want to show you a quick run of the, of the train program on the two curves case. So here we're going to see the noisy image, uh, and we're going to see a class image. So first, we're going to detect the two curves. So to do that, we're going to take the input image, and OK. So here we're just going to, it's the input image. We're going to multiply it by some value, add a bias, and a sigmoid is going to give us the two curves. Then we're going to store that in a variable. We're going to switch to detecting the two points. So here again, we have the input image multiplied by some parameter, add a bias, and now a rectified linear unit is going to give us the two points. And now we'll go into a while loop that will allow us to move the two points towards each other. So here you can see how the two points uh, move. When they meet, the, the loop stops. And then you perform some rescaling. And a global max pool is going to give you a positive number, which corresponds to a class label. So I'm, I'm over time, so I'm going to stop here. So thanks for listening. And I'll be happy to answer some questions. So how uh, to use this package, uh, how do we represent the, the functions? Are, are these plain Julia functions, or do we need to wrap them in? It's a, it's, it's a good question. So right now, it's a, a Lisp-like uh, kind of syntax. So you basically build up uh, the abstract syntax tree. 
So I wouldn't say it's very elegant at the moment, but I can envision a, a point where you would be able to have like a macro that takes in a Julia code and will allow you to produce uh, this, uh, it's gonna be a parcel basically. Right now, <laughs> it's, uh, it's gonna be harder, yeah. All right, let's thank her again. <laughs>